Hi everyone, Mary Vlogmas. In today's video, we'll be doing some DIY stocking holders using these telephone line insulators. In parts of the country, these are pretty readily available in antique shops, but in my part of the country, they're really not. I actually had to order mine on Etsy. It wasn't too bad. They came to about $10 a piece because of the shipping cost. If you don't know, these can be quite heavy. Um, between one and two pounds, I think this size is probably closer to a pound and a half. These are 42s and there are different sizes. I would recommend a bigger size like this, this 42. It's going to be a little bit bigger and so it's going to be a little bit heavier. And since we're doing stocking holders, we want these to be nice and heavy. Now I did do a little research and I checked on Wayfair just to see how heavy stocking holders generally are. And most of them on Wayfair range from a half a pound to about a pound. So I think these being anywhere from one to two pounds will be just fine. These in particular, like I said, are about a pound and a half. So let's get started with this DIY project. I think it's gonna turn out really cool. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to subscribe. You guys, I guess I was being super picky because we didn't find any knobs. I was trying to find something with really good um, surface area on the back side of it where I would be able to put plenty of glue and have really good contact with the insulator. And I just really couldn't find anything that would work. So we ended up getting these beads. This is the glue I'm going to use to adhere the beads to the glass insulator. I do think cabinet knobs would be just so pretty on these, especially maybe some clear glass ones for the color of insulator that I got. So if you can find a cabinet knob that you think would work really well and adhere really well to the insulator, I would go for that. These are the knobs that I thought I was going to use, but you can see on the back side there's just not enough area to apply the glue for it to have really good contact with the insulator. I ended up sticking a Q-tip in one of the holes to hold it with while I spray painted it. In hindsight, fill at least one of the holes with wood filler before you spray paint it because you will be able to see especially the bottom hole. The top hole not so much because the stocking loop covers it. This is the spray paint that I ended up using and it turned out really well. It's so nice and pretty and glittery and then I was trying to figure out how I was going to dry these without having one of the sides touching a surface so I just came up with this. I'm at the point now where I am ready to glue on these little wooden beads that are going to hold my stocking. I opened this tube of glue and it was really starting to rush out so I'm going to try just putting a little bit on this piece of cardboard and then applying the glue with a q-tip. Now these insulators have writing on the front and the back. I'm going to try to avoid gluing these on the writing. I just I really like the writing and I want it to stay intact so I'm gonna there's a seam right here I'm just gonna try to glue my bead right here keep an eye on them as they dry they may move around a little bit on you for the first one to two hours and this glue particularly cures completely after 24 hours
guys think you could get out of my shot? You're in my frame. I'm trying to work here. You think you can move along? You only have like over an acre. Could you? Could you move along? Oh, okay. 